Hit the remote. What's going on? This is your man Yang of the Arena Uncensored. Everybody's telling me that the arena wouldn't be the arena without it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I hit the, so, you know, he gave it to the people. Listen, great show today. Have some guests on. We're talking about um, socialism, uh, the effects of it. You know how the arena does. We're talking about from a, you know, an African perspective also, how it affects us as, as, as Africans here in America. But before we go into all of that, we'll allow the guests to introduce themselves. Starting to my Give right. Oh, that yo, back on me. Let's get a disclaimer. <laughs> disclaimer. The opinions, <laughs> the <laughs> the ex, the expressions, the statements of the arena uncensored, its panel, its guests are totally their own and is not reflective or not and Comcast is not responsible. And we'll give Vince to give the disclaimer again if I didn't, <laughs> if I didn't get it right the first time. But we just really gonna have a good time and get into some discussion. But let's go to our uh, introduce our guest. Hi, my name's Becca and I'm from the International Socialist Organization. All right, Jonathan from the ISO, International Socialist Organization. All right, I'm Kevin. I'm glad to be back. Uh, always good to be on the arena. And uh, I did some research for today, but I, I think I'm going to be doing more learning than anything. So I'm excited about that. Yes, uh, it is I, Vincent Cheeks, a.k.a. Ghetto Messiah. Yeah. 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 Back at the arena. It's good bad. to be here. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank the panel guests for being here from the International Socialist Organization. Uh, thank you, Kevin, also. Anytime. Let's get social, social. <laughs> I be your brother, get down, Ben Yashar all ratchy in the mix. Yes. Arena uncensored. Let's do this. Yes. Okay, Gideon. Let's start it off. Hold on. So hold on. We, let me get a. Hold on. Let now. me start. I got to start off with some because no, no, no. I probably ain't gonna be doing a lot of this. Let me go on gavel give him real quick <laughs> so I can put this down because you know I'm not the guy. So you the main guy. You the main. I already got it. All right, Vince. You know how we do, man. Announcements, <laughs> anything. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> All right, man. Again, we got a great show in store for y'all on the Arena of Sense of the Day. Only one announcement. Uh, starting September 8th, I will be hosting in Buckhead at the Sahara Hookah Lounge. That's so make sure you come out starting Tuesday, September yeah. 8th, and every Tuesday thereafter. It will be a good time, good music, good people. Networking also. We will have celebrities in the building, so please make sure you come check us out. Okay, today's topic is socialism. We have a group specifically here to speak on the topic of socialism, the International Socialist Organization. Uh, I'm gonna give my definition of socialism that I found, and if you guys wanna add to it, please feel free. Uh, socialism is a social and economic system characterized by social ownership of the means of production and cooperative management of the economy, as well as a political theory and movement that aims at the establishment of such a system. A socialist economy is based on the principle of production for use to directly satisfy economic dem demand and human needs and objects are valued by their use value as opposed to the principle of production for profit and accu accumulation of capital. Okay, that is our socialism <laughs> definition. If you guys want to add to that, That's please feel much. free, Becca and John. Um, that's, that, that, that definition is actually a pretty good definition. So, so basically, you know, the people, the people in society that do the work, they, they control production. And basically, instead of having like, you know, these millionaires and billionaires, CEOs, capitalists controlling things, the entire society essentially controls things. And then we, things are made for use and not for profit. So, you know, we won't be going out buying hundred dollar two hundred dollar pair of Jordans because it doesn't cost that much to make that much money and mm -hmm. shoe yeah shoe isn't that that important so in a socialist society would you even have Jordans that's that'd probably be some that's of the a questions. good question <laughs> you, know, right. you, wouldn't, right. yeah. Yeah. you wouldn't have a person's name on a brand right. I don't think so I mean I think that when you're talking about use value and then people owning their own kind of economy, okay. we get to decide that together. Mm -hmm. Now, in my little workers' council, I'm gonna vote against stuff that's that hard to produce mm -hmm. that gives us that little back, but mm -hmm. I may get outvoted. Mm -hmm. So concretely, all the like use value, means of production, all of that boils down to, you go into work and you decide together the conditions of your work, how much you're gonna make, when you're gonna go off, how much f food you need to send mm -hmm. to this, that, or the other place. You decide together, and you communicate that with other workplaces to coordinate the economy. So it's direct democracy in the place that we spend the vast majority of our lives, our workplaces. Yeah, workplace. yeah. So, well, can I, can I just ask, yeah, like, follow up on that. So in the system that we have now, uh, let's say you're working at a fast food restaurant, right? 
And, uh, you know, I maybe, I, I, maybe I make the burgers and, and uh, you know, I do the fries and everything like that. I get paid a wage, right? Uh, probably minimum wage. Yeah, minimum wage, minimum probably wage. like seven seven twenty five uh, an hour, which is not enough. Right. Uh, no matter what. <laughs> and, <laughs> right, five for 15, shout out to Jobs of Justice, all of them. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess my question is, is, you know, how do I go, how is it going to look different if we need to make food? Uh, you know, I have a manager who's telling me, you know, they order the supplies, they right. get this and that, they get all this together, and then I put the sandwich together and I give it to the customer, and uh, you know, Money's I get paid exchange. at the end of the day a little right. bit. Money's but exchange. so how is how is that? I mean, kind of set it up for me. How is it going to look different in a socialist society versus what we have now? Great question. Um, mm -hmm. Me personally, even even like the whole like fast food industry, I think would look different. Sure, like for sure. example, like you was eating a nugget or yeah. the quote unquote nugget yeah. earlier. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We, yeah. 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 I think our food sources would be a lot healthier. Not tell us that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so so basically, like you said, your I guess your manager orders the supplies. Right. Like you'll definitely have more input when it comes to like the total everything. So okay. instead of you just doing like okay, you're just doing the burgers, you're just flipping the burgers. Uh, and then your manager is doing kind of like the upper level stuff. Mm -hmm. Everyone will have like a say in that. And from your workplace and even like the entire food industry, like, because you need to collaborate, right? You still need people to grow the food. You need people to like to ship the food or to, uh, okay. to transport the food and everything. So it will be done, but it won't be a corporation taking most of your wealth. So you make 725. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Okay, so. In that scenario with the fast food, I don't want to say a name because I don't want to get sued for yeah. Michael. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, yeah. there's a uh, Archie kind of restaurant out there yeah. that's not the healthiest for people. Mm -hmm. um, Which one is it? I say the name. <laughs> <laughs> we know what I'm talking about. We know what I'm talking about. Uh, These clowns so, around running right, around right. here passing with out the stuff. Pink slime nuggets. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's not chicken people. Yeah. Um, and so in that environment, would there even be a place like that? Because I want, yeah. I, I, from what I gathered from researching socialism, it's for the uplifting of society and the betterment of humanity and people. Yeah. And we want everyone to be healthy in, in, mm. in, in, in the greatest shape they can be in, correct? So would there even be a place like that that's not the best for you? I'll put it mildly. Um, personally, I would... I would if we have a democratic society, a society that's better educated about their health, I would think we would, we would eventually try and phase that out. Per okay. Yeah. Like we don't we don't need we don't need we really don't need the fast food industry. I I, mean, I would go to a point where I mean everyone doesn't have to be a vegetarian or vegan, but I mean we we do need more. We need less meat in our diet. Most of the world right. most of the world outside of like the industrialized right. industrialized countries they don't they do not consume as much meat okay. as, as we do. And so I think the whole system would. We would tra we would transition out of kind of like eating McDonald's. Hey, hey, hey! Yeah. Yeah. The Archie place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're, not paying, they're not paying for advertising. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. I, I totally away. agree, but I also think that that raises a question about where people are going to work. So there are some jobs that society really doesn't need. Right? Mm. They're jobs that feel meaningless to do. And okay. they're jobs that only make money for someone else. Mm -hmm. right. And so figuring out how to create other jobs, meaningful jobs, share the tasks that are difficult, things like taking out the trash. You know, mm -hmm. I say I'm a socialist. They say, who's going to take out the trash? <laughs> yeah. say, okay, well, Everyone. I'll take it Tuesday. You take it Wednesday. Right. It we can figure this out. It right. But some jobs really shouldn't be around. And so I think that that's a collaborative process that will happen after a revolution. But I do want to clarify that the type of socialism we're talking about can only happen through a true bottom-up revolt. Absolutely. So when people talk about socialism like, like certain candidates, they're talking about socialism that's pushed down on people. Mm -hmm. You're going to do this. You're going to wear this. You're going to work here. Mm -hmm. That's that not our socialism. That's that not yeah. our socialism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dictatorship <laughs> of the proletariat. Listen, can I, can I one, of, one of the things, though, too, I think that we have to understand in a, in a true revolution is that um, not, and especially speaking for, you know, African people in America, is that a true revolution changes the daily and changes the cultural of the people that are involved in a revolution. So I think that this is one of the things, if your revolution hasn't changed, if it hasn't changed 
us culturally in our daily life doesn't change, then the revolution hasn't been affected. It hasn't been effective. It hasn't been a true revolution. I think these are one of the things we have to look for. And we have to understand that this is not a utopia, that this is not, you know, revolution is not an event. It is a process. And in most revolutions, when we study most revolutions, they have been two or three revolutions. You have the revolution to overthrow the oppressor, right. which is going to happen. The, the we, you know, say, you know, for instance, we're talking revolution here, the capitalists and everything, the imperialists are overthrown. Then you're in danger of, like, when we look at Algiers, the neo-colonialists taking down oh, yeah. power. You know what I'm saying? So then you have to, you, so there's a whole nother revolution thing going on. And we look at one of the things we were talking about earlier, when we talk about the Bolshevik revolution, we look at the Russian revolution, and we look at what happened with there and how, you know, the, the anarchists played a part in that the revolution and all of these revolutionary bodies played a part. And, and we see to what Russia has become now. You know what I'm saying? Because of the lack of revolutionary spirit, the lack of revolutionary ideology, and it's become this Masonic type of, oh, this Marxist type of thing where he's become the Messiah to these people, and it's just all in name and, and philosophical now. They're not in revolutionary action. So I think us as African people, this is what we're going to have to, you know, bear in mind that we have to have the revolutionary spirit, and we're going to constantly have to be educating ourselves to what revolution is, what revolution looks like, and what we want out of our revolution, and not allow anyone to give us a revolution or the end terms of revolution, such as not knocking them. But I got to say, even like the Revolutionary Communist Party, you know what I'm saying? And I got I to gotta go on and throw that out there. You know what I'm saying? We cool, but you know, yo, you know we in the studies, y'all. So um, we have to be careful that anybody defies what our revolution looks like uh, for the African here in America. And if it's not along the same lines, like I said, we can build alliances, you know what I'm saying? Because in the beginning of the revolution, we all have the same enemy. But we have to be careful that we don't lose sight of what the type of liberation and type of freedom that we're fighting for and the type of, and this is why I advocate, and I'm gonna be brief, for my brothers and sisters to get involved in revolutionary politics and politics. You know what I'm we saying? To understand. Yeah. Right. To, to understand that. Like I believe it was Sego Touré said that. He said that, you know, um, politics can lead to revolution, but not to be involved in politics is counter revolutionary. Mm -hmm. So we have to be, you know, involved in our thing and know what's going on. Okay. I, I mean, yeah. he was about to say. Well, I was just going to, I mean, based on what you're saying, it seems to me that. We may all disagree on what, you know, a, what our, our socialist society is going to look like. What are we going to produce? How are we going to do it? Whatever. But the point that I kind of want to clarify and know if I'm right about is my understanding of socialism is worker control of the means of production. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that ends up happening, if there is yeah. fast food, mm -hmm. if there is a factory, instead of having a boss, we have a group of people together deciding how to run it and then sharing the profits. Is that accurate, uh, I mean, to, to what the ISO believes? Um, essentially, yes, worker uh, control uh, over production. Okay. Of course, and, and social ownership of production. So so even like, uh, you know, cooperatives under a capitalist society, is still, it still operates under like capitalist sure. logic. And so like kind of like uh, the, the whole system essentially being run democratically, essentially. Go ahead, Becca. Well, I just, I guess I want to be clear about why, why workers, because I think that sometimes you can find some um, socialists that won't be named, that are white, <laughs> who think that if you say worker enough, it's magically somehow socialist, worker this, worker that, okay. work, uh, big business. And that's actually not, again, our type of socialist. Um, Workers aren't morally superior to anyone else. They aren't magically less racist or sexist mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. anyone else. The thing that's special about the working class is that we, as the first class in history for this to be true, an oppressed class, that when we revolt, we can't just grab our stuff and go. So like in peasant revolts, you could burn mm -hmm. the landlord's house down, grab back the land he stole, and then go back to do your own thing. That's mm -hmm. individual ownership of the means of production, right. how you make food. But if we have a, a revolt in our workplace, I'm not going to take the mixer and you take the fancy <laughs> yeah. machine. Yeah. Like it doesn't work if you split it up. Mm -hmm. And that's what capitalism has done. It's made real production happen together mm -hmm. for large groups of people. And so now when we revolt, the spoils of that revolt have to be worked together. So structurally, our society can't work anymore on an individual basis. We can only maintain production if we do it together. And that's kind of the, the material reason why it's possible to have true democracy and collective ownership. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, I have kind of a two-part question for you guys. Um, because socialism is pretty much, it's painted with a broad brush, right? <laughs> and so I've heard this end of the table mention revolutionary socialism a couple of times. But we have revolutionary socialism, we have state socialism, we have mm-hmm. libertarian socialism, liberation <laughs> socialism. We have, we talked earlier about Christian <laughs> socialism. So as far as the international <laughs> socialist organization is concerned, are you guys specifically promoting revolutionary socialism? And can you give a more direct definition of what revolutionary socialism consists of and look like? As opposed to the, the broad scope of socialism. Mm-hmm. I guess um, the difference between so so right now you know you have a socialist socialist uh, candidate running for president right Bernie but, Sanders right shout but, out to Bernie yeah but his his socialism is kind of like incrementing small reforms at a time using kind of like the state capitalist state okay um, then you also have, I guess you said state socialism so I guess you're talking about maybe more uh, central control right. maybe like maybe more kind of like where Russia kind of became right. uh, essentially and that and that's and that's really more kind of like a bureaucratic kind of mm-hmm. like top down mm-hmm. um, but when we say revolutionary socialism we mean kind of like uh, I think I think maybe closer to generally speaking like the early tradition of like Marx and Engels uh, that kind of saw like uh, the, the democratic control of society okay. as being like socialism and, that, and that's really what socialism for the really meant, you know, for the longest time now. But now, of course, when we think socialism, because of, you know, McCarthyism and, and other things, we think of, like, this terrible totalitarian system right. that's, like, that's horrible, that takes away your freedoms or right. whatever. But, uh, but basically, democratic control of society, um, if you got it. Yeah. I mean, I think, so for folks who kind of study revolutionary politics, the piece of information they might ask for is uh, that we're Trotskyists. Okay. So mm-hmm. a particular type of revolutionary socialist. We think that Lenin had some really good ideas, Marx had some great ideas, but no Bible. And then Stalin had some horrible ideas, <laughs> okay. and we want to stop that at all costs, and so we're Trotskyists. Mm-hmm. I, I also think that revolutionary socialists try to um, bring back a tradition of workers revolts from below okay. so socialism from above versus socialism from below workers revolts included chile the cordones okay. iran the shoras the soviets in russia in 1917 over and over again throughout the history of the world these revolts happen the question is will we win or lose next time okay uh, my second part of my question is thank you for your answers um i want to talk about marx a little bit because he had his definition of socialism. And I want to know if you guys in your revolutionary socialism see socialism as a whole as heading in this direction, okay? So Marx defines socialism as a mode of production where the, where the sole criterion for production is use value, there's the word again, use value, and therefore the law of value no longer directs economic activity. Production for use is coordinated through conscious economic planning, while distribution of economic output is based on the principle of to each according to his contribution. The social relations of socialism are characterized by the working class effectively owning the means of production and the means of their livelihood, either through cooperative enterprises or by public ownership and self-management, so that the surplus accrues to the working class and society as a whole. Then he goes on to say that um, the working class will have like this awakening of their conscience, which will be uh, provoked by their slave wages and whatnot. And so it said once the workers come to the realization that, hey, we're working for slave wages, uh, it could be better if we co-opted and do it ourselves. So Marx said that they then would go take over the worker establishment and then from that, they will go to, on to take over the state which empowered this, the uh, capitalistic or worker establishment. Is that where you see the socialist movement heading as far as taking back the workforce to make it our own and then, in essence, taking over and taking back the state? Um, I, not, not necessarily taking this, 
the, the current state, but kind of like creating our own. And so we don't so we don't think that we could take like the current government, like okay. we can't elect ourselves okay. to the government. I'm glad you clarified that. Or we can't when I hear revolutionary yeah, you know, we're not talking word, about a, that's what I'm, we're not talking about a coup either. So it isn't okay. <laughs> you shot, you, you started uh, over there. No, because uh, you know in some countries you know you have coups as revolution, right? Mm-hmm. right. But uh, we're not talking about that. Like okay. you said, with the, the 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 working class as a whole taking like the wealth that it that the society yeah, owes, okay. but the capitalists take it from you, so right. you, you have to take it back. And I, th- I think that for the most part sums it up: uh, social ownership of production. Uh, things are created because people people need to use. Right, right. Uh, we have abandoned houses. Right. We have homeless mm-hmm. people. Right. Mm-hmm. Why aren't Why aren't those people living somewhere? Right. right. So the mm-hmm. but the but because of market because of, we live in a capitalist market system, um, it's for profit. Profit. It's right. not for human need. So socialism would say, okay, we have all these abandoned houses and we have X amount of homeless people. So why don't we collectively, as a group, try to eradicate homelessness right. and yeah. put our people, our society, into these. Yeah. Yeah, some, yeah, people need people need homes. So yeah, we I wanted have, to oh, sorry. Go ahead, no. Yeah, Back and then yeah. Jenga jump in. Um I just wanted to briefly touch on what I think is sometimes a mischaracterization of Marx um, okay. that's super common, which is the idea that the working class will just like we'll go to work one day and then we'll wake up the next day and realize we're being exploited. Right. And, then we're, ah, <laughs> we're taking this back. Right. And, right. and if things being bad was enough to make people revolt, right. then that would have happened by now. Like right. DR Congo mm-hmm. would be the best place in the world because right. things are bad, right. Right? right? It's horrible, right. And so it's not that simple. And that means that revolutionaries can't just sit back and wait for things to get worse. Like I see you hear some people say, oh, climate change will make the revolution happened. You're waiting. <laughs> or to kill us all. Yeah, yeah or exactly. Kill us You're all. waiting for that. Thanks. No thanks. So I just want to be sure that like, it's clear that the addition that Lenin gave, the clarification that Lenin gave to Marx, <coughs> is that we have to organize now in a particular fashion mm-hmm. to ever get to the place of being able to win this fight. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. So I that fighting racism. I want to hear from you know y'all hear from Gideon from, from the Gideon elder on the back. Yeah, right. definitely. Elder as as far as as far as as far as and and to get from a perspective of Gideon as far as you know socialism the effect of how do you think us as in an African people in America is this even a viable solution is this something we should be something we we should even be considering when you look at and uh, you know coming from a revolutionary perspective when we look at our our revolutionaries especially here in America who have practiced socialism or went to a Marxist Lenin leaning a Marxist Lenin understanding meaning like Huey P and stuff like that and we see where the hell that got him mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying so should, is this something that we should even be looking at as like viable and how does this tie into the African to the relation of black people here in America you know it's interesting that I've been listening the concept of socialism it, it seems to me that the people would uh, embrace that right and that it right. would be a uh, marketable as well as a equitable uh, system of governance for our people. The biblical story is a essential in the con- socialist concept because it is the people that uh, even though they have a theocracy and it is uh, governed by a higher power, it is centrally based in the people and the support of one another. And the idea, and I really want, if you could, for the children's sake, uh, how do you think that if socialism in and of itself is about the people and them controlling the resources, which sounds great. I don't know who that, would, society, <laughs> right, who that wouldn't sound good to unless it was a capitalist somewhere lurking in the, in the shadows. Yeah, right. How did capitalism trump socialism mm-hmm originally and is the socialist agenda this peace loving agenda that the capitalist killer mongrels just stomped (laughs) on or how how did uh how did the people give up their rights well i mean based uh, on your research well historical um evolution of capitalism like you think about like the europe like european feudalism so Mm -hmm. so basically i mean you know most early human society um 300,000 years to about really the agricultural revolution of mostly the communal societies. Sorry. People, people. Social. Yeah, pretty. Ba- right. ba- it was based right. on need. But then you had uh, 
uh, this revolution where uh, we didn't kind of like the the haves and the have not. So yeah. you had so then you start to have monarchs. Uh, you start to have kind of like feudal feudalist type uh, feudal religion. lords. Yeah, feudal lords, landlords, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I want to say so. I mean, it's connected with uh, kind of like the. The, mer- the early merchant class. They had a revolution. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they had a revolution. The had a revolution. <laughs> they had a revolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the European, yeah, yeah. the European yeah, yeah. merchant yeah. class over like the European uh, landlords and, and, and everything. The guilds and all that stuff. And then, of course, right. over here, you know, the the transatlantic slave trade, uh, eliminating like the indigenous population, and then colonizing Africa, and then colonizing Asia, and then et cetera. Like they, they had a revolution and they spread capitalism throughout the entire planet with the sword. Right. Well, my, my my question is, and and then too, because I want to go into get into a little bit, because we talk about the, the the proletarian, we talk about the lump, uh, the working class. I want to know about that lumping, right? That beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lumping proletariat. Yes. That most, and for us that don't know what it is, can I get the camera on me, son? You <laughs> oh man, you slipping, bro. Oh. 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 What did what's what's son say? Don't crash into locked. the mountain, dude. Right. 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 They got it locked in on oh, me. Yeah. But anyway, let it go because that's a beautiful face. Okay, I can, I can talk anyway. That's a beautiful face. Well, um, well, well I still want to talk though. Go ahead. Yeah, just, just um, my thing is, and to explain what the the, the lumping is of what you know has been turned to mean is those brothers and sisters out there that a lot that we go to and we talk to is you homie gangbangers, you homie dope dealers. <laughs> The, the prostitutes, the downtrodden, the the, right. the undesirables, yes. so to speak. But like uh, Dep- like um, Phil Marshall of the uh, Third Development Panther said, George Jackson, he said that every uh, revolutionary must come to terms with being an outlaw right. at, at one particular time because we're against the very system. We're outlaw, right. you know, so we have to become outlaws. Mm-hmm. How does where do the lumping proletarian? Mm-hmm. Fit into this? Can you define that? Because I don't. The lumping again. Yeah. The brother that ain't working. The dope dealer. The gang banger. The one that society oh, throws the away. The non-working, uh, working, like the non-working, non-working, the non-working, working, yeah, yeah, the non-working, okay, the non-working, right, the the non-working, working, working class. I was trying to jump in here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, just a quick point. Um, mm. You said that it's very dangerous to be a, a revolutionary in the United States as a black man, and I, mm. yeah, why did they kill all the black Marxists? I mm. think is an important question. It's because black Marxists are dangerous yeah. right. to the status quo. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate your like call to get revolutionary. I appreciate you. Appreciate. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, the lumpen proletariat I think is really an important question. Mm-hmm. Just like um, like the small shopkeepers, mm-hmm. like the something marked called the petty bourgeoisie. Mm -hmm. They're classes that are kind of up for grabs. Mm -hmm. Their ideas can be swayed in different directions. Mm -hmm. And if a working class organization, if real working class revolutionaries are worth their salt, they're gonna try to win those folks over Mm -hmm. because there's so much power and strength in that position. There's so much um, willingness to just throw down. And we so need that right now, right? And so smart, Organizers within the working class know who their friends could be mm-hmm. and cultivate it. Now, when we talk about this issue of the uh, militarization of capitalism, and yet we don't see that same type of concept in the socialist uh, philosophy and agenda, do you believe it has? And because, you know, Black said we need to talk about solutions. Mm-hmm. The solution seems to be a big stick, a military atomic stick. In America, that's how they solve all their problems. How do you overthrow an atomic beast that, uh, like the Hulk, when it gets angry, it goes in and starts shut it down? Shut it down. That's why they say the workers, you know, the factories, and shut it down. I think the I think the answer to that is uh, it's really numbers, right? So when we say socialism, we say socialism from from below, and we think like uh, the masses of people make revolutions. So we're not we're not hoping, we're not waiting, not waiting on a savior, we're not waiting on. like like someone inside the government that sit, sits by the door that's gonna like do something for us. But the power is basically in numbers. And like you said with the military, um, you have to also think about like the people in the military are human beings too. Mm-hmm. And when, it, when revolutionary situations come up, um, oftentimes like people in the military have said to disobeyed orders, mm-hmm. right? So even, even in the Vietnam War, some people, you know, oh, yeah. they disobeyed orders because, uh, because it comes to a point like, are you gonna shoot 
you know what I'm saying, the people that you're supposedly supposed to be protecting. Right. Um, are you going to shoot, you know, your, your, police fa- your family? Police officers seem to be doing yeah, that pretty good. good. Police is, the police is, di- I think the police is a little different. I think with the, with the military, though, um, because you're told that you're protecting your country, mm-hmm. and then if you're told to then turn your gun on a supposed countryman, I think for, for some people that's, that's not gonna fly well. So even even in the Russian Revolution, because they had been through like the World War and p- people were literally starving, like a lot of the soldiers they didn't want to like turn their guns but, for the Tsar. Yeah, yeah but I mean Lenin had Lenin had mm-hmm. tough propaganda. What was it? Lamb bread, lamb, peace, lamb, and, peace, and bread. Yeah, right. Right. Lamb bread, peace, <laughs> yeah. and bread. So I mean, you know, you when you got that tough propaganda like that, but you know, one of the things we're dealing with a bad but propaganda machine in this this government exactly. who has criminalized and dehumanized yes. African people. I had something on Facebook. It was showing the mouth. difference between a riot and and Europeans having oh, fun yeah. at the <laughs> beach. <laughs> you saw that after, after the, and it was like young people after the game, like, yeah, yeah, game, game or something like that. Like, like young people just <laughs> celebrating. And then it came to rebel it was, rousing. It was riots, right? We're savages. You see that right? Exactly. So you're dealing with this propaganda machine. So even looking at and this is why I advocate us to study revolution and even. You know, and I tell my African people out there, you know, even European revolutions, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, you know, Yanka, your boy, yes, but yeah. you have to study European revolutions mm-hmm. because revolution ideology and philosophy is revolution ideology. That is the one thing that will be the uh, a common factor right. with, with, with our alliances is the, is the key word revolution. If yes. they say revolutionary on the front of that, then we should have some semblance or some, there should be some like ideology mm-hmm. and philosophy that say, hey, you know what, we can get together at least at this juncture of the game right. and say this is who our enemy is clearly because we're revolutionaries. I want to ask Kevin though yes. about, you know, and um, you know, I know you study a little bit of, about anarchism and everything. We have my, yes. my man Marlon on there. What do you feel? I hear them using a the word a lot that a lot of people have a problem with and that is democratic. <laughs> How do you feel about all of this? He keeps saying this democratic thing and this and that. How do you feel about all that? What do you think about that? Alright, well, I want to be clear. Like, I'm, I'm still making up my mind on a lot of this and that's why I appreciate having, having uh, all of you here mm-hmm. as an influence on that. Um, I am very skeptical, and I think we'll get into this transition to socialism. I mean, tra- like you That's have your vision, <laughs> yeah, you kind of set it up. I think we'll get into it, but I am very skeptical of of seizing any tor- sort of state power mm-hmm. and being able to do some good with it. Um, mm-hmm. I think you know you talked about human history. I mean, you were talking about three hundred, two hundred thousand years ago. Humans mm-hmm. exist, uh, but only it's only seven to five thousand years ago that states first start to exist. Mm. Governments exist in the world. And until maybe the last 200 years, even if you want to say that, they have always been oppressive and done nothing yes. but hurt mm-hmm. the, the lower class of people. Yes. Uh, anybody who wasn't, wasn't you know, middle or upper class or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. But in the last kind of 200 years, maybe extended a little bit, some of the states have gotten a little bit smart and mm-hmm. they've said, in order to control people more, we got to give them a little more. It's kind of like you were saying uh, the other day. You were talking about uh, the the programs that the Black Panthers had with mm-hmm. the the um, breakfast program. Yes, right, you know, yes. now the country set up WIC and right, all right, these different right, exactly. programs because they said if we don't do it, somebody else somebody is going to do, do it. it. Right. right. Um, and so, I guess I'm a little skeptical of you know the idea of Vanguard Party, and I'd really like to hear you all get into that. Uh, having a party that that uh, brings people forward and says this is the way to do it, let's do it. Um, and so I want to hear about it because you know maybe I'll change my mind. Mm-hmm. All right, I think that's good. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. So just to supplement what Jonathan put forward and then end up at Vanguard. Um, so if you go back to what you were talking about for socialism, yes. you're talking about a pre-class society. Mm-hmm. You're talking about folks who share together in all of the work. Mm -hmm. And you see at this time, no such thing as systematic racism, no such thing as systematic sexism. You see gender fluidity, you see human potential. And so when people tell me that being oppressive is in our DNA, I tell them no. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of our history is not like this at all. Mm -hmm. Class society was something special and different and had to do with changes in the way that we got food. So we basically had more than we needed and somebody decided who got what of that extra. Didn't have to work anymore, and then controlled other people, the rise of class society. Later on, this developed into something more elaborate, the state. A revolutionary socialist who carefully reads what Marx and Lenin wrote, understands that the smashing of the state is what socialism is about. Mm -hmm. Anarchists tend to feel Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. 
you can go directly from capitalism to an absence of a state. Right. That in the process of a revolution, you smash the state, and it's all good after mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Socialists believe, well, revolutionary socialists believe that the process of getting to a classless, stateless society is going to require a defense of our revolution. Mm -hmm. Lenin wrote this excellent mm -hmm. book that talks about the state as a machine for class oppression. Mm -hmm. And I think that's totally true. During the time after a revolution, but before you've really vanquished your enemy, the, the ruling class and also international forces that might want to come back and take that stuff, you know, mm. that happens <laughs> in the history of revolutions. Right. <laughs> so in that transitional period, Having an organ of class oppression is a useful thing. This time it is the majority oppressing a minority, mm -hmm. hence the democracy. Mm -hmm. But it's not ideal, you're right. Mm -hmm. Any state is an oppressive thing. Do we have the possibility of getting to a classless, stateless society without being able to fight our enemy until we've won? I don't think so. Exactly. Neither did Lenin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, yeah, on the on the defense part. I mean, you think look at the Russian Revolution, mm -hmm. uh, Civil War, uh, Counter Revolution. Like they had to have some uh, some sort of defense. They had to have a state mechanism. Unfortunately, because of everything that happened in the Civil War, you didn't kind of replace kind of like the potential of like uh, a working class socialist uh, society with <laughs> with one that was ruled from the top down mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. by the party. You know what I'm saying? Which which is unfortunate, but. You you have to defend your revolution. Period. I like you, you don't you don't have you don't have a choice. So so even like even in historically anarchists still had to deal with this question. Like you have to be you have to be organized enough to fight off attacks from the inside and the outside. Mm -hmm. So you you might have some what they might say is authoritarian, but but you have to defend your revolution. That's not a that's not an option. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the but you know and that's the hard part. That's, that's the tricky the part. part. It's like you said because what what ends up happening. You look historically is that uh, the thing of democracy, when you talk about democracy, it starts to lose its power when you have, and it, because it is tricky, when <clears throat> you have this, especially the, well, what they call it, and I don't know much about this dict dictatorship or the proletarian, when it's mm -hmm. the people are appointed from the top down to help maintain this, then other people, dissension is looked at as, as enemies. And then you got firing squads. Then you got, you know what I'm saying, then you got exile and you got, so the democracy, the whole democracy thing, the whole, you know, dual parties, we can have, you know, we can have more than one party and they can have their say and this gets wiped out by just being, by just a one, a one party dominated type of state. You know, one party dominated type, and this is where that, you get in the danger of this state capitalism thing, this, the whole state taking control and any dissension is looked at as enemies. I think that's gonna be a question. And this is why I always pose it for the Africans here in America, every part of us, and I advocate us having, you know, to work in coalition and, and to build alliances with revolutionaries, but to make sure that we have our own thing that says, hey, look, we still at some point in time better address our issues and our needs because once the overall enemy is overthrown, what does this new government look like for us? Like when we were reading in the RCP's constitution, they don't have the democracy. They have to vote for Bob Avakian or any of that. It was none of that. He's just a natural leader. But I was reading the constitution. It says, should they win, though, now the African, for him to practice self-determination, has to have a vote. What the hell's happening? I got to vote. <laughs> if I want to succeed from you guys, <laughs> if we want to have our own thing, but we didn't have to vote well, we for who was going to be, the, yeah, or who was going to be the supreme leader right, right, right. of the party type of thing, right, you know right. what I'm saying? So it's some uh, stuff. So <laughs> vote by this is right. So sir. I say that I, I would always <laughs> warn, you know, and to tell, you know, Africans in in the revolution, any revolutionary movement, or dealing with any people, to be ever vigilant yes. and to always have say, hey, listen, you know, I don't have a problem being a revolutionary. I don't have a problem working with anyone in coalition and fighting for a better world, you know, because we are humanitarians, we're egalitarians, we believe in, you know, we're anti-oppression for any people, mm -hmm. but I am of African descent and my issues should be addressed and they are a valid concern and I need to make sure that they're not just going to be swept under the rug. Vince. I couldn't agree more with that and you can, you can tell the sincerity of a revolutionary um, formation by some of their history mm -hmm. and so... For example, some of the more Maoist tendencies uh, used to call homosexuality a bourgeois deviation. Mm. So if women Getting weren't willing to make worse. sure that they birthed a lot <laughs> yeah. of babies for yeah. the state, yeah. if women didn't want to be a baby-making machine, 
Mm, I don't know. Some might object to that. Mm. Then they weren't actually revolutionaries. Wow. See. Yeah. And yeah. so checking things out and really reading mm. is important for all oppressed communities because yes. there's a lot of ways to do this badly. And that's what I would mm -hmm. just like as a segue. So we learned something from Spain in 36 where, yes, you lose if you don't take the state to really fight back against your enemy. Mm -hmm. But and you're referring to the Spanish Civil War Spanish yeah. in Civil Spain. War in yeah, the anarchists, anarcho-syndicalists, and other groups took power. They took the yeah. factories yeah. as the fascists were trying to spread. I Absolutely. Just, just for those of you Google <laughs> Spanish Civil War out yeah. there. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Um, but we also learned something not to do from Russia as well, right? Yes. So there were some things that we learned, yes, these work, and other things that don't. One of the things that's very clear that doesn't work is trying to have socialism on the basis of starvation and scarcity. Mm -hmm. After a civil war with a country that didn't have a large working class and wasn't particularly um, economically advanced anyway, everyone in Russia said, including Lenin, that this would not work. Mm -hmm. It would fail utterly if Germany didn't have a revolution. And guess what, dot, 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 Germany didn't. Mm -hmm. And so. It was, it was foretold because of economic factors that Russia could not be socialist by itself. Hmm. And it doesn't denigrate what they've given us to learn from and to improve on, because frankly, the United States will be slightly different pictures if we ever... Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask this question, uh, piggybacking off what Kevin said, as far as the transition to socialism. Because again, with socialism, we're talking about vast sharing among society as a whole, correct? Mm -hmm. And in order to have this vast sharing amongst the society, to give to everyone, that means ultimately something has to be taken, correct? So, and if we're taking, we're taking from the capitalists, right? Because socialism is a direct stark contrast to capitalism. So my question is, how difficult of a transition do you think this will be, uh, considering that the capitalists, like Gideon said earlier, are murderers. They're just murderers by nature. And, and, and they murder when no one is trying to take something from them. <laughs> so how do you think it's going to be <laughs> with this revolutionary socialism yeah, I think I think here in America, I think we have a, I think I think we have a special place here in America because America is like the world empire. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's say if we were in Russia and we, or or let's say we were in a different country right. talking about the same issue, we would think about oh, if we do this, America is going to come. You could be Bomber. having a conversation in Yemen. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, America, yeah. America, America, right. America's right. going to come That's Bomber. real. That's right. happening. Right. Yeah, so, right. so I do think, I mean, this isn't like easy what we're talking about, but I think that American empire, uh, I, I think if, was something, if something like that were to happen here, I think it would cause so much reverberation around the world where, I mean, who's the superpower? We are. Right. So it's going right. to, even it will be difficult for that's any. That's questionable though these days. Exactly. I'm gonna tell oh, you, we have rise in China. Yeah. We have rise in But I'm going to tell you, and that's what goes into what Ken was saying when I mean vanguard. As, as Africans here in America being the vanguard because we are in the the imperialist seat of the world. I mean, you right. know, this is America. And when mm -hmm. the black and one of the most oppressed people mm -hmm. and displaced people mm -hmm. are Africans here in America. Absolutely. And when that African in America shakes off the shackles of capitalism and wakes up, and like you were saying about the violence, hell, we already repressed every day anyway. Right. Exactly. So the conditions, right. oppression makes revolutionaries and explains it up to the revolutionary. Mm -hmm. My job out there dealing with the lumping, like you said, dealing with those mass people because they're already battle tested. They've been born and in, in, the lights already turned the hell off. Right. The water's already off. They already, you know, food stamps, now they're doing this thing. They already can't get housing because they got criminal records. Right. Food stamps, they in gangs, so they've been in the shootouts. They've been right. shot up. They, they've been exposed to, they are perfect for cadres. They've yeah. been exposed to some of the most revolutionary conditions without being in a revolution. Mm -hmm. So they don't have that fear factor. It goes back to what Becca was saying. It's just a matter of politicizing them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if we don't get to them, then you have the capitalists, the materialists get to them. And this is why you have the dope dealing for Cadillacs and Jordans and stuff like that. Because the reactionaries, the capitalists have beat them and have them doing reactionary things. But I think that once they're politicized, once they understand what's really going on, they're not going to fear because they already don't fear their prisons. They're already outlaws. And then that's going to kick off. That's going to be the catalyst. That's going to kick it off. And 
once the world sees mm -hmm. that it's kicking off here, once the world sees that this African here in America, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, is kicking it off and has alliances with well-meaning and well-intentioned other people, mm -hmm. you know, our indigenous people, AIM, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and, and other oppressed people, even, you know, the lower economic Europeans mm -hmm. here, um, and, and the proletariat amongst the Europeans, and they lumpings amongst the Europeans, once they see that kicked off on the world, it's going to spark an international thing, but I think that the African here in America plays a pivotal role Absolutely. in the international revolution. And I don't think that we should downplay, brothers and sisters, stop downplaying yourself. We shouldn't downplay the role that we that we have in the international revolution. Well, let me just say this in reference to our people and how we began to transform our minds. Because when we look at the concept of uh, what, as Black said, we need to come up with solutions. The arena uncensored is a solution. Yes. Right. Because... The capitalists control the means of media. Mm -hmm. Media, it, through the 1%, the have been able to control the 99.9%, .9 the very people who should want a stake in their own, the resources, mm -hmm. right. the distribution, yeah. the whole nine. Now, capitalism says you have a voice and you have stock in the company <laughs> through the stocks and bonds. They give you... From capitalists, they say that you are part of this ownership because you can buy stock. Now, I would like for you to explain in, from a socialist agenda, and the people, and we know that the stock market has gone down <laughs> exponentially in this country, and, of course, you, the monetary system here is fiat. It's not right. based on anything. Right. It's about to be. It's about to be based on something. You about to be the stock. <laughs> I'm the we stock. Have always That's been the prison complexes. Like you know what I'm saying? Right. It's always it's been, the been the stock. So yeah. I want to talk to you. I uh, want you to speak on the issue of media, which makes this program so powerful. Because I don't see many socialists out there. Of course, you have Bernie Sanders now. They don't. Uh, I think he was shot it down with the. Black Lives Matter, you know, they, they yeah, punked him they, out. They punked him out. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 we didn't even realize that. Look, look, and this is first, look, put the camera on me. This is for Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I got you, and that's a whole nother show. Yeah, exactly. That's a whole nother show. Yeah, but we didn't realize, we don't realize <laughs> yeah, who are the leaders in show. the socialist agenda right. first. Right, because yeah. Bernie Sanders played a huge role in the civil rights movement. See? Seriously. Did he, did he, uh... But come at it, come on. I was going to say, did he go see Malcolm X's grassroots speech? I don't care if he marched in the civil rights movement. Like, that that doesn't mean anything. Go ahead, then. Well, my, my, thing, my thing about Bernie Sanders is, um, I mean, we... we still a white guy? No. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I, I, have, I have a totally different perspective of, of socialism. I do, I do think um, what he represents is kind of like... Uh, I mean, there, there's some progressiveness in, uh, in mm -hmm. it because people are, uh, they want something different. Is it a facade, is what you're saying? <laughs> people want something different from, from, from <laughs> bro. Is that what it is? Oh, no, no, no. It's going to You know what I mean? Oh, no, people want something different from the Democrats and Republicans, but right. if he's going to be the alternative, why is he running in the Democratic Party? Mm. He is running under the Democratic Party. So if he's running under the Democratic Party, you can't really provide him a real it's alternative. Team, but that's, that's why I'm getting you can't, you can't. It's all, a, it's all a game, though. Yes, it's 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 all a game. You know, the whole two party system is thing is, is is all a game. Good cop, right. bad You know what I'm cop, saying? Right. It's it's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's right. And 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 I feel like that. And we look at we, even with Black Lives Matter. I feel like there again, the lives of Africans yeah. have been used absolutely for another agenda. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We need to study. You know, Black Lives Matter. Are they pushing a the democratic agenda? I mean, what's the whole thing behind this? And are, are the lives of our children? Mm. Our precious lives. Hell, my, my, I knew Black Lives Matter because I'm black every day. My life yeah, matters. Hell but are our, our, our lives, they're again being used for a whole nother agenda. And if it is, um, now we, we expect we want complete and total transparency. Yeah. Go ahead, Becca. Jump in here. So I, I was lucky enough to be part of an action um, last December, mm -hmm. shutting down Lenox and Phipps Mall uh, for okay. a little while. Um, what did y'all go and lay down in the, in the parking lot? Or Diane. What? Yes, Diane. <laughs> it was so an a ladder. intersection. It had like a oh, ladder yeah. and yeah. everything. Oh, so you did lay down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Oops, cops, I mean, the cops it up. Go ahead. <laughs> but that's, that's very much related to this theme of like media and then Black Lives Matter because mm -hmm. it was. It was making sure that the people who live their lives every single day getting to not think about police violence, police murder, they have to take a minute or two hours, hopefully, mm -hmm. um, to stop and think, to stop and acknowledge that. 
And that's the way, one of the many ways, in, including the show, that you get around the fact that the media belongs to the 1%, to right. the racist, white supremacist, mm -hmm. patriarchal 1%. Mm -hmm. They have an agenda, mm -hmm. and we have to force ourselves into the daily lives of people who only hear that version. Mm -hmm. We do it through media like this, we do it through protest actions, and we take the stage sometimes, mm -hmm. even if it's Bernie Sanders. I, I mean, they tried with Clinton, but she was just yeah. too savvy. I, I, like, yeah. I, like, I, like, I like you, Becky. I like uh -huh. you. Yeah. Okay, and, I have, I have can I throw question. one more thing out there, too? Okay. Just, just real quick, and I'll be brief. Um, we wanted to say, too, when we were talking about capitalism, you was talking about the stocks. And there again, we yes. talk about the dialectics, the contradictions and historical dialectics of African people. What role have we played traditionally in capitalism? We are big consumers. Right. So we have to look at from that standpoint of our role in the revolution. Sometimes, and I was talking to Don about this. Shout out to Don, too, oh, baby. Yeah, yeah. Don. Yeah, baby girl. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. She'll be watching um, this, too. Yeah, she's going to be watching. She's going to, you know. So one of, one of the things, though, and she's and she's a big, you know, I hear what you're saying, Yanga, but the workers, the workers, right. you know. And so I, I love that, but also the power of the consumer. Right. And since we, the African people here, make up a very big part of the trillions of dollars we spend out in our community a year, let us have accountable spending and withhold some of those damn dollars. You know what I'm saying? Don want to know how that affects reparations, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was black. That's how you know how to fix reparations. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 He's, he's getting gaveled for the production room. Right. <laughs> I had something to find. I forgot. Anyway. This, now, my next question, for me, uh, it touches on one of the biggest criticism of socialism for me, and that is the law of value um, and how the monetary system would work in, the, in a socialistic society. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the articles I read stated that eventually socialism wanted to eradicate the money system that we have now and it would go into something as like a barter system and yeah, even yeah. I saw something that um, would create labor vouchers that you would use in exchange for goods and services. Mm -hmm. So with socialism, one, is it true that one of the aims of socialism is to eventually eradicate the current monetary system. Get rid of the central bank. Be, yeah, which would be, that's <laughs> gonna be more, less money, more problems, I promise you. Um, <laughs> And so what would be, you know, what is the monetary system going to be for the socialist society? Um, so uh, the thing that I think everyone agrees on is that profit is eliminated. Okay, so just profit. to define that is okay. like, say if Jonathan is my boss, I work for him, I make $15 worth of stuff, cups. Okay. He pays me $10 and he gets to keep that $5. That's profit. He didn't work for right. it. Right. He gets it because he owns the cup factory. Right. <laughs> yeah, he owns the means of hey, the several corporate yeah. CEOs just had a stroke, by <laughs> right. the way. Right. 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 Go ahead. So, <laughs> what you say? Bob? So profit, yes, profit is eliminated. Okay. So people are actually paid the value of the work that they do, right? Okay. The end of profit. But mm. that doesn't mean that money necessarily is eliminated. Some people think that it should be. Some people think it should not. In a move towards a truly classless, stateless society with a mo more decentralized agricultural production, I could imagine barter working. Yes. But I also really like my cell phone. Uh, really. Right. And we have products Indoctrination. that are helpful right now <laughs> that come from a global economy. Right. I don't think that deindustrialization and socialism are the same thing, no. <laughs> no. right? No. Okay. So yeah. I don't think that we need to say. So we're not going back to cave mandate. No. Ah. Okay. 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 I have had okay. seventeen babies and be dead of cholera. Yeah. No, thank you. No, oh my no thank you. No, I think that most folks who talk about labor vouchers have a, a realistic plan. But okay. again, I'll go back to your comment, which is that we decided together. So any sitting here and saying this is the perfect blah 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 is going to be a lie. So the labor we vouchers decide together. Would, the labor <laughs> vouchers would if we decided together collectively it could be used as the new form of currency. And, yeah. But what I'm would it be you, called it, though? It, it is this is what I love about uh -huh. socialism because dollars. Vince <laughs> is is part of a socialist project uh, uh, project every day he comes on the arena with the <laughs> council. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so you got you got to love that. Right. Um 
Um, but one of the things I want to say, two things I want to mention, and a question. What I want to say is go back to like what you said. Until our women are free, man, then then uh, right. you know, definitely, and that's what's wrong with Russia now. If we still have this thing that our women are oppressed, have a role that they play. This, but if we're not getting the maximum production out of our women, especially us as African men, getting the, the maximum production out of our women on building. Uh, um, um, a, a, a healthy society right. for us, then we are not true revolutionaries. I have to challenge that, Yang. But I don't. I mean, let me just. I, I don't want to. You know, this is the arena. But well, I think there is a propagandized perspective from white European ideology mm -hmm. that devalues motherhood and the science of raising a family, learning the herbs, healing medicine, all of those things that help a society to become strong. So I don't necessarily want to say education can be classified totally as parochial in its nature, yeah. but that education is omnipotent and, and it's, it's everywhere. Well, if, and motherhood is at is the that, center I don't think that, that, that higher I don't, education. I don't think, and I'm going to just address, since you address and go right to you, and we come to, I don't think that it's, it's a question of motherhood. I think that when you have a defined role, for a person to play, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. When you say this is what you're limited to, this is what you do as a woman, as a woman, as a me, okay, as right. a brother. You know right. what I'm saying. Right. Us as African people, I think that this is what gets us. It's not just white supremacy mm -hmm. that we're battling. It's white male supremacy yes. that we that we battle. It's so gender right. supremacy. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Absolutely. we have to be very careful that when we shake the shackles of our oppressor off of us, right. that we don't emulate. That's that neo-colonialism mm -hmm. again. Certainly. That we don't start to emulate the very people that oppressed us. Right. And understanding historically. The roles that African women have played in our development, our society, Queen and Zynga, and yes. so on and so forth. So I think that over here we have, when we became uh, in, in enslaved and things of that nature, that it wasn't we were battling white supremacy. We said white supremacy, but it was a white male supremacy. And I'm gonna tell you who helps me do that, recognize that every day. There again, shout out to Don. 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 And when I'm talking to her, I'll be like the yeah. black man. She said, "What about the black woman?" Intelligence and brilliance and genius has not been marginalized by our ancestral culture. Right. It had, it's when we were dominated and suppressed and oppressed in a system that of we, white supremacy. Exactly. That we started to start to Jeff, put them to divide them to a traditional here, role. So but so I, so yeah, just to a, speak on like what we call traditional role, I mean we think about like the family. Um, or like pre-class society, like right. 200, 300,000 years of human history, like the, the entire community took care of each other. Yes. Right? So we didn't have, you didn't have the concept of family, like all of us would, mm -hmm. would share, share in different roles. Right. But then once you get a class society, agricultural revolution, right. then kind of like the beginning of patriarchy, yes. now women get oppressed uh, in a specific role. Women, mm -hmm. Women's job is to make the babies for society or mm -hmm. to to do to do certain labor in, in, in under well, that's an anatomical well, mandate. I mean, that ain't a yeah, mandate. Yeah. Yeah. See, that ain't that ain't an anatomical. That's Bible. See, that's that Bible. I don't. Yeah, know. we got we got two. That's that Bible. We got two, no, that's anatomical. We got two minutes. And we definitely want to oh, come. Yeah. We got two minutes. Okay. Want to give everybody a time to wrap it up, and we definitely want to address this again because I want to have you back on the show. One of the things you said when we were talking about this utopia, this multicultural society, you said in a socialist utopia. That there's no sexism, no racism, no homogenous do we, society. Do we, do we really believe in, you know, that's kind of metaphysics to me. Do we really believe, and I go back to that good nature of man again, right. that we all just going to get along like Rodney King said. I do. <laughs> in, right, order to, yeah, yeah. in order for me, for me the, the, the core to promote socialism and, and do the things that socialism say is to kill egoism. If you mm. kill the ego... That cuts out of a lot of the I'm this and I'm that and right, I'm right, up right. here and you're down there. You're right, you right, know, right. egoism is that's classism. But it's class. But it's a part of it's, it's a part. But it's a part of the American culture. It white is privilege, white entitlement. Can we just do it? That's very individual. Right. That was my yeah. 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 I mean, it, I mean, it would take it would take time. Of course, you're yeah. not going to eliminate right, any of that overnight. Man, but, I mean, a lot of time. Uh, let's start. Uh, let's start. But yeah. let's everybody. We got two minutes. Let everybody have a last comment. I've said mine. Thank you very much. Yeah. So let's go to bed. So I think that to have a socialist revolution that is actually capable of overthrowing the powers that be, you have to be fighting all forms of oppression. And you have to have every mm -hmm. single person who's involved in that revolt committed to throw down against another person's experience of oppression. And that's gender. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah, wow. I know. That's, that's, that's why it's deep. hard, like, right? Yeah, that's that's why it's hard. Which is why we organize politically now and we fight in the social movements of today with an eye towards revolution for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Love it. Jonathan. Um, Jonathan, my man. Um, 
Thank you for having me on. Hey man, thank you. We definitely need to come back. Oh, contact information too. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what's that? ISO Gmail or I guess. ISO Atlanta. ISO Atlanta at gmail dot com. Uh, you can email us and uh. I definitely, slower, slower. I saw Atlanta uh, at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely want to come back on the show. Oh, with absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Kevin. Kevin. Absolutely. We got to continue this discussion. Yeah. I learned so much today. And uh, I actually, I, I yeah, got to say. He was quiet today. Yeah, he was. Kevin was Well, you know, I was, I, I mean, I was taken in so yeah. much. And I, I am now rethinking a lot of, uh, a lot of how I define socialism. Yeah, I mean, right. I expected it to happen, but like the whole, you know, belief in no state. I mean, yeah. and we got to talk about, you know, we didn't even get to Cuba. Right. Some of the oh, yeah, we got to get to Cuba. 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 The, the, the Cuba. Revolution, Haiti. Venezuela. So oh, there's so yes. much to talk about. Yes. Uh, again, thank you everyone for being here. International Socialist Organization, Kevin Yanga. Gideon, you already know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Kill the ego. I, I'm kind of for socialism, but I think it has a lot of kinks what? to be worked out. <laughs> Rewind so, the tape. What? I, 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 like, I like the some of the ideal socialism, but it does have like the money thing. And yeah, then, you yeah, know, yeah. you get the voucher. You gotta work it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, I just say simply that the white man says that it can be changed overnight. It's a nuclear weapon. Oh, 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 oh that's why he's son. God is saying that. Don't be nothing left for socialism, capitalism, any. No people and in them. And for my brother's spirit, nuclear power. And for the spirit, hey. the spirit of my brother, Black Sun. And for our listening audience, all of this is for y'all. Peace. Free movement. 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 Oh, y'all are great, though.